egregiously overvalued. And there's any one of a hundred different companies that can bring the exact same thing to market. Technology company, so what? There's technology in every freaking car on the road these days. You look at the history of that technology, it goes down in price, down in margin continuously. So Tesla faces a very stiff competitive environment that's developing right now. They are the category king, a fantastic company. They set the pace, um, but they're not going to operate in a vacuum forever. Except arguably the ones that General Motors uses are more capable and lower cost. And there's nothing about Tesla that can't be easily and immediately duplicated by any other automobile company. And I've said that consistently for the last three years, and I'll continue saying it. We uh, went to market with the Bolt, was a company that didn't believe um, battery electric vehicles were going to become mainstream. And I say that uh, very transparently and very clearly because we did not get behind the car um, from a marketing uh, and retail standpoint. Um, we had a lot of people who didn't, didn't believe in it, um, sort of a self-fulfilling thing. Thanks for joining us once again. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. As you can see from the start of our show, uh, we've been doing a lot of research to determine why it is that Tesla has such a bright future, but there are a large number of analysts who are saying that future is less bright because of a number of issues. The primary uh, issues that are being articulated are the profit and revenue impact of competition over time. So we started our show off today with a discussion from an analyst we had started off uh, earlier in the week on regarding insanity. And the point that the analyst had made was that uh, Tesla will have competition. And once that competition arrives, profit and re revenue for Tesla declines. Um, in general, the concept seemed to make sense, hence why he articulated it, and hence why he has a $380 price target on Tesla. This kind of makes sense because there is uh, a concept called second mover advantage. So what happens is one company goes out there, develops a product, and then the secondary companies that come afterwards can lever the knowledge of what that company did in order to deliver as good if not superior products that allow them to take away market share and profitability from the first mover. The problem that's going wrong right now is articulated by uh, the last video I showed, which was the fact that Tesla now has the 4680 battery. And this battery uh, has a lot of attributes that are articulated as you can see by Tesla. But the problem that's coming up is that it starts the whole cycle of first and secondary movers again. And it's our understanding that Panasonic took a year, almost a year and a half to reverse engineer and produce an equivalent to that battery. So the thought is that if competitors have to come after Tesla's new battery, it could take them one or two years to reverse engineer and then perhaps another year to get into production i think it may sort of sound a bit silly to some people but <laughs> this was this is like if for people that really know cells this is a massive breakthrough for cylindricals to be able to to get rid of the tabs dramatically simplifies its winding and coating yeah and has an awesome thermal and performance benefit yeah um, that's a, just to be so elaborate on that a bit it's like when the cell is is going going through the, the, the system the system it, it has to keep stopping where all the tabs are yeah so you can't do a you can't do continuous motion uh, uh, production uh, if you have tabs. You have to keep stopping, and, and then there's a rate at which you can start and stop and accelerate again, and and really slows down the the rate of production. And then sometimes you get the tabs wrong, um, and you also get lose a little bit of, of of active area. It's 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 really a huge pain in the ass to have tabs um, yes. from a production standpoint. Yes. Um, and so when we put it all together and go to our new 80 millimeter length, 4680, we call this uh, new cell design. We get five times the energy with six times the power and enable 16% range increase, just form factor alone. Uh, yeah, so we're, 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 these, 
<laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. And, and just, and just to, to clarify that when we, when we see these um, plus the 16 percent or whatever the, the, the percentage rate increases, these are the amounts due just to that particular innovation. Yes. So we'll list a whole bunch of innovations, and then when you add them up, you get a total uh, improvement in uh, energy density and cost. Uh, but uh, th these numbers are are what refer to just this thing. Yeah, and I want to stress, this is not just a concept or a rendering. We're starting to ramp up manufacturing of these cells at our pilot 10 gigawatt hour production facility just around the corner. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's a video of uh, some of what's going on in the plant. Um, now, I mean, to be clear, it will take about a year to reach the 10 gigawatt hour capacity. Uh, so uh, this is important to appreciate. Like when you build a factory, there's a certain capacity that you design to, and then uh, it takes some period of time to actually achieve that capacity. So I would say it's probably about a year before we get to the 10 gigawatt hour annualized rate uh, with the uh, with the pilot plant. And this is just a pilot plant. Uh, the, the, the actual production plants will be more on the order of uh, you know, maybe 200 gigawatt hours, maybe more over time. And <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, but but let's stack up everything we just saw at the cell level. So just the cell form factor change enables a 14% dollar per kilowatt hour reduction, just that cell form factor change. And now that you've been teased on this factory, we're gonna go on and, and walk step by step through that factory and, and discuss a series of, of innovations there. Which puts them three or four years out in terms of response to the 4680. I guess the notable exception would be for those who've chosen to watch the video extensively and start the reverse engineering process based on that. I believe that's a possible way for competitors to sort of close in on it. But in essence, that battery in large volume should reduce Tesla's battery costs by some place in the range of 50%. And what this does is actually increase, not decrease, uh, Tesla's profit margins without having to um, lower prices or anything relative to new competitors. So I think this is pretty exciting news for Tesla, but it really articulates the point that competitors may exist but and there's plenty of work for them to do because tesla can't make enough vehicles for the demand that they have um, but it suggests that the reasons why analysts are suggesting tesla may be in trouble in the very near future especially on profit margin declines for example um, it, it's just unrealistic another issue is the fact that the 4680 uh, facilitates uh, tesla's ability to deal with semis because not only are you seeing cost savings, uh, you have a power increase uh, with less materials. So basically, these uh, the 4680 facilitates battery viability in large vehicles so that they can carry full loads instead of having to have a very heavy battery and a very light load, as is what is going on right now with the Daimler uh, truck uh, entities. So uh, I was wanting to also dive into a whole discussion of, I want to say the GM process. We decided to include comments from first Bob Lutz and then uh, the current president of GM. What he indicated, as you saw, is that he's saying that the only reason that the bolt did not succeed is because it wasn't properly supported uh, fully by GM, especially from a marketing standpoint. And I think this kind of makes sense, but there are a couple of detail points that don't jive with what he's saying. The first one is that uh, what Bob Lutz indicated is when, when the car was being designed, the goal was to make sure that the body or, or the vehicle that was installed with the batteries was cheap enough to sort of fit in the middle of the, the cost range because the EV buyers were likely not to 
able to afford higher end uh, spending for these vehicles. Not only was a lower cost shell in essence chosen for the exterior of the vehicle to keep the cost down, but GM actually, as a strategic process to try to put Tesla out of business, actually introduced um, a $10,000 um, sort of discount against what their costs were, again, as a way to potentially put Tesla out of business, which Tesla's customers did not follow through on and went ahead and were, were bought, buying Model S's in large numbers at the time, and then subsequently the other vehicles in Tesla's lineup as they came out. So um, it was interesting to hear this comment regarding the fact that uh, GM also didn't think uh, EVs were actually viable. And he actually mentioned the EV1, as if you recall again, uh, a lot of customers who had EV1s were really happy with them and tried to buy them or hold on to them. And they were threatened with lawsuits, et cetera, by GM if they did hold on to them. So I would just say that uh, these comments are fascinating to hear. And it sort of begs the question of, if you're a senior executive of a big company like this, even an analyst, is there a little bit of insanity going on given that you have all kinds of data to support why it is Tesla is the best in the space? And you have all kinds of information in terms of new products that allow Tesla to increase its market it, its market share because they're delivering great products, but also increase their margins because they found ways to lower their cost of goods sold, uh, such that like on the 4680 battery that supports um, uh, the margins increasing while others are having difficulties. And we aren't even going to get into the whole economies of scale piece of this discussion because that's also a uh, Tesla advantage to be way out ahead of everyone in terms of access to all the way reverse integrated to the mines, all the way with uh, the large number of charging facilities, particularly level twos, even level threes starting to come in. Uh, Tesla is in great shape. Um, you know, there's an argument right now also that there's 800 volt technology that's being used by others, I'm, which I think is good. Tesla slash Elon has articulated that um, they're, they're considering a move to 800, but have not needed to because they're able to deliver high speed charging under their current infrastructure. There's a large amount of investing that would be required to make that change, which they don't have to do currently because, um, you know, they're the leaders in the space and they already have a bunch of chargers out there and the vehicles are prepared to handle the electricity that's being pushed through. And then one last uh, item that popped up, which I was really surprised done by, is that um, miles per kilowatt hour, it turns out Model 3 is rolling at four miles per kilowatt hour as the highest sort of in the, in the space. Lucid is in that 3.8 and uh, the lowest is the, the Hummer, which is coming in at 1.8 miles uh, per kilowatt hour. So this suggests that, um, yes, the Hummer's got a big battery in there, but with all the weight it's carrying, it's lowering the fuel gas mileage dramatically. And so just throwing at a bigger battery is not always the solution to get great outcome. So the goal of this show was really to emphasize the point that, yes, uh, Tesla has an advantage. No, that advantage is not going to be uh, eroded quickly uh, and therefore affect uh, Tesla's margins, um, which would therefore sort of hurt revenue and profit and invalidate uh, sort of all the numbers that are driving Tesla's stock price right now, as uh, some have been predicting. And so I think uh, obviously we'll keep an eye on this. I think it's uh, fascinating to watch because um, the process that I'm seeing GM go through seems a little bit insane, much like the analysts, because um, yeah, they came out with a product, but if the product uh, costs you $2 billion from vehicle fires, 
it doesn't really matter uh, how much marketing support it has, it's still a dud. So I'm fascinated by sort of the whole GM team and what they're saying and doing right now, because it looks like core logic is sound if you're an ICE engineer or ICE executive. But as we move into the EV space, it's very easy for GM to make mistakes uh, as they're figuring this out that result in um, them potentially being put out of business. Uh, a couple of mistakes I see is if LG is having challenges getting their batteries through that are vehicle efficient, should you expand the number of suppliers to determine if you're getting better throughput from other entities. Another issue that's popping up is LG initially started out with the pouch form factor while Tesla was doing, in essence, the AAA size batteries in the 2170 as they were building their own facility. And now they're going to step up to the 4680. Um, one question that pops up is that normally in tech, everybody figures out who's got the best in breed and follows through. And therefore, they can be a second mover on a technology that solves most of the problems. Well, Lucid and Rivian have chosen to sort of mimic Tesla's process um, in terms of battery form factors successfully. We're not seeing that from the GMs of the world, etc. They're all going to LG. And this brings up a really interesting question as to why are they doing it? Maybe insanity, because it results in there having to be billions of dollars worth of errors before they can get a stable product that can work long term, it doesn't jeopardize their firm. So I would say overall, stay tuned, because there's a lot of sort of interesting answers that we're going to get over time. And uh, they're not going to stop trying because um, that's where the entire market is going. And they're uh, recognizing that. And they're working on creating sort of innovative solutions. Um, and so um, we look forward to the folks at, um, uh, you know, that in Detroit reverse engineering and being able to bring out competitive products and protecting the jobs of themselves and all their employees rather than sort of the Tesla uh, onslaught that we've seen successfully over time. So uh, we'll keep you posted more on how all this works out. Um, Let's keep an eye on the profit margin on the second quarter, third quarter, as more of the 4680s are being sold and uh, there's more transition to it as new 4680 battery plants are being completed in Germany and in Austin. And uh, let's see how all this plays out. But I do think that um, it's all systems go green lights for Tesla. Um, you know, 150% growth this year uh, in car sales. 30% uh, or better margins that'll be increasing hopefully toward 40% uh, by the latter part of the year. And as these things occur, um, you know, there's a shortage of vehicles because oil prices are so high. So from every metric I can see, the company's doing great and deserves a very, very high stock price, something like 1500, maybe 2000 now. And, um, the arguments against it that are out there, I don't think make much sense. So we shall see what happens with that. That's the end of our auto discussion. Just want to remind you of our health tip for today, which is don't forget 25 leg lifts per leg each morning uh, with a five pound weight is best, but you can do it without. We also want to um, uh, note that we have a, a number of health tips below for you to consider as well. I was, uh, saw a note regarding music therapy from one of our viewers, but he didn't give me uh, extensive discussion on that. And if you know anything about this, I'd like to learn more or some recommendations of things to check out in that space. At any rate, this is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, German, au revoir, French, la hitro, Hebrew, hoda, hefez, farsi, drazvice, Russian, ni hama, Chinese, kombawa, Japanese, heido, Swedish, and in Jamaica, we say enough respect, walk good man. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Bye for now. We look forward to your constructive comments. And this is a copyrighted broadcast. Have a great day and bye for now.